Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I have a special video for you all. This is going to be straying away a bit from just sort of the default game, just, you know, continuing my Let's Play. And, you know, as I sort of talked about before, my guides have really kind of slowed down a whole lot. I have a couple more left in my, um, mind, but they've really slowed down a lot because the game has really sort of hit a point where there isn't a whole lot left for me to really go a whole lot into detail. Some people have been leaving awesome comments about some ideas about stuff they'd like me to talk about, and I definitely plan to cover those as well. But I thought this would be something really cool to also help shine a light on some other awesome work that a fellow community member has been doing. And this is something I teased in my last video, I think, even. It's a very in-depth mod. This is called the King Arthur's Knight's Tale Enhanced Edition. And it does a couple things to sort of rework some of the balance in the game. But the main thing that I'm really excited to show off to you today is going to be some character overhauls, specifically for Sir Bedivere and Sir Geraint here. Now, if you look at this here over on Nexus Mods, King Arthur Knight's Tale Enhanced Edition by... K Charon, uh, Charon 666, he's doing a lot here, and you can see the sort of main goals here, including character overhauls, he's done some sort of base level reworks to things to kind of make the game overall a little bit harder, honestly, kind of reduce some of the OP combos that have kind of been identified in the past, sort of, you can see here he, as he labels them cheese tactics. Another thing he's done is diminish the impact of AP generation on kills, which is a big deal for vanguards especially, by just making AP pools bigger in general. And this also comes with increasing the cost of AP on some skills, so that way getting the refunds isn't quite as impactful because the skills are more expensive, but at least your base pool, it won't be quite as hampered because the maximum pool will be adjusted for that. On top of this, just sort of making some balance changes to some fairly weak skills in the game, making them a bit stronger, improving things like poison, bleed, bird damage, giving extra secondary effects to things like bleed and enhancing poison. And he included a couple status interactions, such as burn and chill slash freeze kind of counter each other. If you apply one while they have the other, it'll remove one, so now a target that is frozen can't also burn. But as I mentioned, the thing I'm most excited for is the character overhaul. As you can see, we have Sir Bedivere, the plated berserker. He did a huge playstyle rework for this guy. And Sir Geraint, the elemental archer. There's a lot going on here, as I'm sure you can see just from a first glance. And because there's so much here, I'll go ahead and just let you pause it if you want to read everything here. These are sort of the highlights of the reworks for each of these characters. I'm not going to spend too much time going into them and sort of explaining them. I'm just going to show you what they can do in action. I've been playing around with them a bit. They've been quite a bit of fun. It's definitely a cool change from their previous form. But I'll go ahead and show you what skills I've picked out for them and a little bit of why and then just show you what they can do. All right, so... The first hero that I wanted to show off, I'm not going to kind of do them together because it's a lot to sort of take in. I want to give Geraint here a chance to sort of shine and show off what he can do. The first thing that I did, I'm going to go into skills a little bit here, is you'll notice that the two of these upgrades here have been changed. So now for Geraint, instead of getting bonus against enemies that are burning or poisoned, they're against frozen or chilled and shocked enemies because these are the status effects that he can set. I'm keeping Ice Shield as usual, it's an amazing defensive, and I'm going to try and use him as offensively as possible, so I took Elusive for in case he kills something, cooldown reduction, and Adrenaline for an AP refund. And a new skill that's been added in Tier 2, there's a couple actually, is Ice Arrow. This is just kind of like a Poison Arrow type skill, but now it applies Freeze, which is a very strong a um, debuff, so I'm a pretty big fan of that. Having strong CC, this is one of the things I've talked about for Marksman. If they're not going to have great damage, they should have strong utility, and having a ranged freeze like this is a good step in the right direction. Similar to the freezing attack ability, now it also applies chill after the freeze effect wears off, reduce the cooldown by one, give it some armor breaking, which I think is really good because Marksman can really struggle against armor. And Storm of Frost, so now Icer will create a sort of AoE effect at the point of impact and just a way to sort of 
get more damage rolling and apply chill. So very good all around. This ability is pretty cool. He added a new trap option as well with Ice Trap, and this one is definitely a bit more unique compared to the other traps in the base game. When this is triggered, they will take 100% weapon damage, and they will be frozen. Again, amazing, very powerful debuff. And with the upgrade on it, at the end of the turn, the enemy is hit by a falling icicle that deals additional damage. So there's like a delayed damage effect. I think that's a really cool mechanic and concept. And we'll also freeze them for another turn. Huge armor break on this with 13 armor loss. And I've already kind of mentioned how I think having some more armor break on them can help. Applying chill instead of just applying freeze and reduce the cost by one. There is Lightning Trap, which you'll probably remember from the original Sir of your skill tree, has basically just been moved over to Geraint. All the upgrades on it are the exact same. As well as Lightning Arrow, I'm pretty sure this was a Tier 2 ability previously. Now it's Tier 3. Again, it's all the same. This one didn't really need to be changed. It was a pretty good move beforehand, so it still is. But... This here, you may recognize the tooltip from Ice Wall, but this is Ice Blockade. And this is something that I've thought, and I've mentioned before, how I think is just something that the marksmen need if you want this cover expert to actually be a thing. So with this now, he can just create a small Ice Blockade for two turns, provides half cover, and basically can give himself the triggering effect for cover expert on demand anywhere in the battlefield. Reduce the cost by one, give extra vitality to the blockade, reduce the cooldown by one, and increase the casting range for ice blockade by three tiles. So in case you want to set it somewhere else that you're going to be moving to, I suppose, or create it for another marksman, you have options here. So I actually did take cover expert now because I do think that uh, this could be useful given we have ice blockade and then long reach. This stuff is the same here. And there's a couple other moves like mercy. This replaced, uh, I think it was just called hunter um extra damage against knockdown vulnerable or stunned units this seems much better than the previous one but i'm not really sure how much i'm gonna be uh comboing off this probably wouldn't be too hard but as it kind of being a passive it seemed a little harder to show off in this so i kind of basically took all the stuff that was as new as possible that i think could be as visual as possible as well we'll save bedivere for uh, maybe just a different part altogether. We'll see. But let's just go ahead and jump into a uh, mission. You'll notice that this is not the Chained God patch. This is from an old save file where I had Grant laying around. So I do not have the Soul Merchant gear. And um, I think that's actually going to be a pretty good test to see how good Grant can be here without having the sort of... I don't want to say crutch of having the Soul Merchant gear, but if he has the Soul Merchant gear, the damage is going to be good anyways so i think this will really help highlight the skill rework we have here so we're in the old three sisters missions if you guys have seen some of my old videos you'll probably be very familiar with this one so you can see here we have much larger ap pools to begin with to kind of match the more expensive abilities i'm not going to spend too much time on going over every single upgrade and increase i'll let that kind of be a little bit of a first experience something you can see for yourself for all of you who i highly encourage to check out this mod but i mean just briefly you can see here lots of things are costing like five ap now six five i mean the abilities here five for a shot but we have a base pool here of 12 so all right what are we going to do first i think we'll go defensive ice shield with Geraint, and Let's do a blockade here. We're going to move you up, move you behind that. And we'll just do a lightning arrow. Let's apply shock. Some decent damage. Got a double damage proc for 134. Hit these guys for 61. That's pretty good. And let's just go ahead and throw down more CCs on the rest of these enemies over here. And... We'll 
we're actually going to globe of protection on Isolde, which is now castable on other people, but we are going to cast it on herself. And let's even throw an Ice Lance at you. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay. Inspire. Let's go ahead and shoot an ice arrow over here. Um, good armor break. We'll hit you. You can see that AoE we got there. And... Let's go ahead and move you away. That's fine. Icicle. Because then if we move up here, we can Earth Shaker. It's a little bit out of range. Oh, well. Get that kill. Get a power attack. Well, actually, if we bless, then the power attack should get a kill. Not quite, really. Interesting. I forgot to power attack that time. I'm dumb. Uh, we'll just defensive stance again. And, um... Well... Oh, really? That's cover there, huh? Um... Well... Let's just take, get a shot at you. Got the double damage, 83. And... We're gonna blood hex you. Slowing hex. You. Blood hex. Okay. Um, we can easily step back, that's fine. We have the ability to dodge that first one plus the uh, ice shields. We're going to go ahead and put our ice blockade back up. And let's go ahead and shoot a lightning arrow off. Nice, got a kill. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and take a shot. Nice, got another kill. And you see our cooldowns are cycling pretty well with that uh, um, upgrade we got on our basic shot to reduce cooldowns on kill. We took a little bit of damage on Isolde. That's fine. And... Ice Lance. Let's go ahead and move up. Death Hex. Power Attack. Easy secured kill. Let's shoot an Earth Ball. You'll notice the AP cost on our Earthsmith ring here has been upped as well a one ap to be fair one ap cost on earth ball that's that was a little unfair <laughs> get a kill here then we can run over finish you off and finish you off pretty nice didn't get a chance to really show off the traps too much that fight wasn't a great real setup for that but i do have one in mind and i'll go ahead and show that off so we can really see that ice trap in action all right, well, I went the wrong way, ran into this fight. It's been a while since I've played this one. I meant to go over here, so let, might as well. Let's see what we do in this fight here. We're going to get some picked. I mean, I think... I mean, Lightning Arrow is just such a good ability. We're definitely going with it. Apply Shock to three targets. And then with Morgana here, apply Chill to them. So now we're looking at, what, 2.5 AP for you. Sorry, 2.9 AP, so they're not going to be able to do anything with their turns. Um, go ahead and freeze you. We're going to Ice Shield and Ice Blockade. Then with Isolde, we're just going to Global Protection herself. Let's even put an Ice Wall here just to really 
screw with these guys. And we'll defensive stance and move you up like that, I think. And Ice Lance you. We just got crazy crowd control. Alright. Um let's go ahead and you're in melee, that's annoying. But we'll move. So now let's Ice Arrow. We'll go ahead and move to here, that's fine. Inspire, bless, power attack. Um, yeah, free swing. Let's move up to here. Let's uh, send an ice lance over. So now the earth ball free swing. I was hoping it'd go on this guy. So, thankfully we do have Grant here. And, okay, they're still frozen. Nothing I need to worry about there. Let's actually move you back. And we're gonna put a lightning trap here. And, man, just look at the range on that. Easy kill there. Um, you're frozen, so I guess I didn't need to do that. Let's just move to here, and... Yeah, bleed secures the kill there. And we're looking at a bleed of 56 here. That is drastically more damage than base game version bleed from a blood hex like that, so... You can definitely see the difference in how much he really they wanted to increase the viability of those uh, dot-based um, abilities. I know a lot of players I remember seeing, you know, feeling like they couldn't really do a whole lot of creative stuff build-wise with some of their dots. And um, I definitely think you will get that sensation with uh, this rework. Let's put another blockade down. Lightning arrow. Just keeping those status effects up. Let's go ahead and move to here. That's fine. And freezing attack. Kill for your soldier. And we'll just uh, move you back. We'll move you up to be as bait. That one's doing just fine. And there we go. Alright, this is the fight I meant to show off. Um, you can see here, this is... You could definitely use traps in fights outside of this one. This is just a very easy fight to really get a chance to show you these traps. So we're going to move Garain up. And... We'll open with a uh, lightning arrow here. We're getting four of them. That's awesome. Ice shield. Let's go ahead and uh, put a wall for now. Just move you up just to kind of eat some hits. And uh, we'll just pass there for now. Okay, so now we're going to throw a lightning trap and throw an ice trap. Then we're going to throw a uh, earth ball. That's primarily just to get rid of the wall to enable their melee to come rushing out and start running into our traps. Let's go ahead and throw another ice trap down. And here. Then we just back up. Let's back up. Just 
just boom, 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 frozen icicles. And now they're frozen, chill, just completely stopping dead in their tracks. I, it's not doing a huge amount of damage, but the fact that we just had three freezes go off on an enemy turn saves us so much AP on our own turn to just lay into them. Let's go ahead and move Balan over. We'll set up the ice blockade. And just pick them off. I really think the animation too for that ice trap is pretty cool. I'm a, I'm a fan. One last fight against a bit of a mini boss, Fair Maiden, just to kind of show the amount of crowd control Grant now has available to him for a single target. So we're going to ice blockade as usual. We don't even need to ice shield. Let's not worry about that. We'll open with an ice arrow. Get that freeze in there. Let's go ahead and drop a slow on him as well. And we'll even inspire, because why not? And let's throw a lightning trap down. All right. Back to Geraint. Let's go ahead and hit him with a lightning arrow. He has very high resistances. And just lay a shot into him. Let's just keep backing everyone up. This dude's definitely going to reach us, but I'm just really kind of experimenting with Grant's ability here to slow this guy down. Um, I mean, we'll just put the blockade back up again. And let's hit him with a ice arrow. Then we can back up. Um, all right, let's throw down a lightning trap. Let's move you over. And let's do an ice trap. I'm just really chaining the CCs on this guy. <laughs> and we'll put down another ice trap. And with these ice traps, I feel like we could probably infinitely CC this guy, if we're being real, because even with his high resistances, the freeze ends his turn. But And there's no cooldown on this, like all traps, because you can throw as many of them out as you want per turn. So, I mean, when it comes to having a no cease, having a no cooldown freeze ability like this is just so strong for single target crowd control. I mean, we can just keep backing up here just to keep kind of showing it off a little bit. The only thing that's really a um, an inhibiting factor is you can't put traps, you know, right in front of them. So there's always going to be a little bit of that uh, space that you'll just have to keep inching back little by little. But if you preset them, then it kind of fixes that problem. Steps on again, and then we can just put this one here. Next one here. That time he managed to step on too, but I mean, you can see how crazy strong this is. The ice trap, it's nuts. And then, I mean, it, if you really need it, by the time, you know, ice arrow comes back off cooldown, you can easily use to fill in in case you're starting to run out of some spots for ice trap. It's just so strong. But I think we've bolted this guy enough. Let's just go ahead and finish him off. I just thought this would be a good example to just really show off what a huge boost that Grant has gotten through this mod in terms of his utility and his crowd control. So that is Sir Grant, the Elemental Archer from King Arthur Knight's Tale Enhanced Edition. The damage isn't anything, I mean, you saw his damage compared to the other party members we had, Isol uh, Morgana and Balin. 
he wasn't really on the same level as them. Wasn't quite as bad, I think, especially when he was getting those double damage procs, but where he was really shining was the crowd control, the debuffing he could apply. It was night and day compared to his previous form. His ability to set these status conditions as well on enemy turns as sort of a prep turn so you can kind of have a bigger burst window for the follow-up turn is just a pretty good interaction. I think it kind of helps you set up for bigger swing turns. Ice Arrow, I mean, it's kind of like Ice Lance, just a ranged freeze attack is really good. Having a no cooldown freeze ability with Ice Trap is insanely strong. You have to be a little smart because you have to have the enemy step on it. But, I mean, I feel like if you play the game enough, you kind of figure out the enemy pathing. So it's not too hard to predict that and set up your ice traps for it. So, especially for single target, if there's like a mini boss or something, ice trap will just absolutely ruin their day. I think this is a great rework for him. And I think this alone just really kind of shows how much effort that uh, Karen is putting, or Karen, I'm sorry, I don't entirely know how to pronounce your name, bud, but um, he's putting a lot of work into this, and it's really cool. I So many changes to Grant, he's much more dynamic now. His play style isn't super different, but it does feel refreshing, I think, and highly recommend. I ended up showing off a few more fights than I originally intended. I was just having so much fun using him. I will save Bedivere for another part, which means that this is the end of this video. If you made it all the way to the end, I appreciate it. And once again, please go check out this mod. I'll be including a link to it in the description. Thank you, and I hope to see you in the next one.